This video breaks down why the Nuggets are officially top contenders. Denver's undefeated since the trade for Aaron Gordon. They just went 11-3 in March, and their starting lineup has the highest net rating of any five-man unit in the NBA. You're about to see how Denver's overwhelming opponents, whether or not their current hot streak is sustainable, and then I'll predict if Jokic will win the MVP. Only 26% of the people who watch these videos are subscribed, so pressing that sub box would go a long way. Shout out to Marcos, who said that Andre Drummond's going to benefit from the playmaking of both LeBron and AD in LA. That's a great point. I think this change of scenery is going to be great for the Big Penguin. But thanks, Marcos, for the great take. The question for next video shout out is coming up. The comeback kids from Colorado are a different type of dangerous in 2021. They're legitimate threats to win it all. Fueled by the NBA's top MVP candidate, Nikola Jokic, the Nuggets are an offensive powerhouse, and Nikola's right-hand man, Jamal Murray, is a big part of that as Denver ranks fourth in offensive rating. The Canadian Jamal has found his rhythm after a rocky start to the season. Those two are one of the best duos in all of basketball. And then considering Denver's also got a 22-year-old breakout star in MPJ, Michael Porter Jr., that's a damn solid trio they can rely on. The Nuggets' big three took a while to finally mesh together on the floor, but it's been something the Nuggets have been able to rely on for buckets and leadership all season long. What was missing before last week was that other legit option who could defend and provide a scoring upside within the Nuggets' starting unit. Losing Jeremy Grant to the Pistons in free agency last offseason was a big blow for the team, and kudos to Denver's front office for realizing they had to fill that void. All it took to get that type of player back in their lineup was trading RJ Hampton, Gary Harris, and a single first round pick to the Orlando Magic, and in steps Aaron Gordon, who's been nothing short of special in his first few games with the Nuggets. And it's not that he's put up wild stat lines or anything, but AG's accepted his role and has proved to be a perfect fit in the Nuggets starting unit. In Denver threads, Gordon's locked up guys like John Collins, Trey Young, Ben Simmons, and Tobias Harris. And that's big time because in past years, even though Jeremy Grant was solid defensively, quite honestly, the Nuggets have struggled to guard powerhouse Western Conference players like LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Kawhi Leonard. But the strength, athleticism, awareness, and effort of Gordon when guarding the perimeter should make that much less of an issue. Nuggets coach Mike Malone now has the option to put Gordon on the opposing team's most talented score while also losing nothing offensively. Compared to the other defensive-minded players Denver's had in the past like Torrey Craig, Gary Harris, and the aforementioned Jeremy Grant, Aaron Gordon's easily an improvement offensively. We can't forget about a crucial piece in the starting lineup in Will Barton III, whose hustle and strong mentality makes him the team's glue guy. Will's a player who's going to always bring the energy defensively. He can create offense off the dribble at a high level, Barton may move back to the bench whenever Monte Morris returns from injury, but whether it's Barton or Morris coming off the bench or starting, the Nuggets will roll with whatever Coach Malone decides to do. It's a small sample size, but Denver's starting five of Jamal Murray, Will Barton, Michael Porter Jr., Gordon and Jokic has outscored opponents by 48 points in 64 minutes together. The starting five has an offensive rating of 132.3 and a defensive rating of 94.3, meaning they're outscoring opponents by a whopping 38 points per 100 possessions. The early results for Gordon in a Nugget uniform are very encouraging as they've put up wins over playoff teams in the Atlanta Hawks, Philadelphia 76ers, and LA Clippers. The former dunk contest runner-up has always been an incredibly difficult player to put a label on. He's sort of good on defense, sort of good on offense, but we don't really know who he is. But that's only considering he played on lackluster teams in Orlando and never played with an elite point guard next to him. Aaron was forced into being a ball-dominant playmaker and scorer. But that's just not Aaron Gordon's most effective ability. And for his adequately talented passing, cutting, and spot-up shooting to fully reach the next level or to his potential, he needed teammates who were capable of creating shots at a top-notch elite level. Luckily for Aaron, he's now playing with the greatest passing center of all time, and he's already shown a knack for cutting into open space, where Jokic can back down defenders in beastly fashion 
and find Gordon in the paint. Gordon's now fully going to be able to maximize his great cutting ability, and as a secondary playmaker, he should make the Nuggets offense flow. We've looked at the starting five, but what also makes Denver a dangerous team is the fact that their roster also includes six other talents who are going to play a massive part in their title push. The sixth man, Monte Morris, is capable of winning you a game or two in the playoffs with his scoring, and he's by far Denver's most talented role player. But what makes this team deep 1 through 15 is the up and coming wing defender in PJ Dozier, veteran big men in Paul Millsap, Jamichael Green, plus JaVale McGee, and last but not least, the dime dropping Argentinian point guard, Facundo Campazzo. As the 2021 campaign begins to wind down, and Coach Malone starts envisioning his playoff lineups, an 8-9 to nine man rotation come the postseason isn't out of the cards. To win 16 games without losing a series, to therefore take home the NBA title, history's proved that role players who are capable of stepping up with big games and shots are vital to a team's chances. When your star players are having an off night, who's going to be the one man off the bench to carry the team? And Denver has a bunch of those guys with a ton of experience and talent, players who aren't afraid of stepping up to the moment, so that's another main reason for why they're legitimate contenders. But for the main reason, third string big man Bull Bull isn't currently in the rotation, but next year, I guarantee that the 7 2 crossover artist will be Denver's backup center. Who knows, maybe Bull will be forced to check in during a game these playoffs and contribute this year. But the main reason why you can't forget about the Nuggets when you're talking about who's going to win it all in 2021 is because of how the Joker is slicing up defenses like an onion with his once in a lifetime dime dropping ability and beastly inside and out scoring. The race for MVP has gotten a lot less intense in the last few weeks. First, the season-long frontrunner Joel Embiid suffered a bone bruise and missed 10 games. Then LeBron James, whose defiance of father time had him firmly in the conversation for the honor, suffered a high ankle sprain, which is going to keep him out until mid-April. But Embiid and James going down only made one thing more clear, which actually should have been obvious in the first place, and that's the fact that the Joker has been the most valuable player all season long. In the best physical condition of his life, Jokic is second in minutes per game, and in the fourth quarter, he's shooting 61.2% overall and 48.6% from three. A time in the game where he used to struggle with his long range shot in the past three seasons, that was likely due to fatigue. He's also significantly ahead of any other MVP candidate in clutch scoring. But overall on the season, Jokic is averaging 26.5 points, 11 rebounds, and 8.4 assists on 57.1% shooting from the floor and 42.8% shooting from deep. He's tied for second in the league in total triple doubles as well. Not bad for a slow footed five man. And if he took home the MVP, Jokic would be the first center since Shaquille O'Neal in 2000 to claim the award. That's pretty impressive when you take into account that Denver plays at the second slowest pace, which leaves a lot fewer possessions for Jokic to pad his stats. Most impressively, the Serbian sensation owns the league lead in win shares with 10.7, 3.4 more than stars on top teams in Giannis and Gobert, who are tied for second in the NBA. And that's the widest win share gap the NBA's seen since 2015-16. And that was the year Stephen Curry became the league's first ever unanimous MVP. For next video shout out, why or why not are the Nuggets legitimate title threats? You can follow the channel on Instagram at dflowhoops to stay tuned on every new upload. Go get that account to a thousand followers. That's at dflowhoops. Links in the description. But this was dflow and I'll see you next video.